Mormon Leaks has just published a 2012 document labeled Attorney Work Product from Kurt McConkie. He's a Salt Lake City-based law firm summarizing legal investigations of abuse involving members of the Mormon Church. Joining me to talk about this is Molly Barrows. Molly, you know, we, we just finished doing a whole series of stories on the Catholic Church. We've known about this type of thing with the Mormon Church. It hasn't been that public. I really think the Mormon Church has a better PR team. They've been able to keep this quiet for an awful long time. Although this has been, there, there's a great book. It, it's called uh, Under the Banner of Heaven. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the, the development of the Mormon Church as it moved out west. And it talks about some of these issues in the very early days. Uh, what This, this document, uh, attorney, this attorney work mm -hmm. product, tell us about it. Well, this was leaked to Mormon leaks, and it is a legitimate document. They said it comes from a reliable source. The person who runs Mormon leaks reached out to the law firm to verify if this indeed this was their document. They verified that it was. They said just redact names. So basically it outlines seven cases where the law firm essentially lists accusations against members of the Mormon church, whether they were missionaries out in the field or they were leaders, and they were accused of a variety of accusations, but a lot of them centered around child sex abuse. Some uh, One missionary was accused of fondling a 15-year-old girl. Another was accused of messing with an 8-year-old child. And in all these cases, there was no effort made at all to report it to authorities. These people were just moved. These missionaries were moved and sent mm. back home. And mm. they felt like in the notes in this report that this was the best situation. This was the best way to handle this. Yeah, there's no difference. I mean, no. if you take this case and you look at the right. Catholic Church, you look at all the other, the USC, the colleges, it's always about protecting money. Absolutely. It's not just, you know, to, to protect money, you have to protect reputation. And to protect reputation, you can't have these stories get out. So what ends up happening? The same thing we see with the Catholic Church. Uh, they have big influence. Mormons have massive influence out there and nationally, actually, more and more nationally. But so, so this strikes me. Nowhere does the document indicate that this was any of these cases were referred to the police. No, and it goes back to the point that you just made about the similarities to the Catholic Church. Basically, they want to treat accusations of child sex abuse as a problem that can be overcome with prayer and forgiveness as opposed to a crime. Mm. So it goes to the greater system and structure of power that they've set up within their religious institutions to protect the institution and not the victim. They basically say, we're your intermediary to God, so we are setting ourselves up a with God, we're above the law. If you are a child of, in many of these lawsuits, by the way, that have been going back to 1998 against the Mormon church, victim after victim of child sex abuse has come forward and filed suit against the church saying, you guys systematically told us you were handling this, but you didn't. You didn't report it to authorities. You told us that we didn't necessarily have to report to authorities, that the person had been forgiven, that they okay. were working to overcome their problem, but there's no overcoming pedophilia. Well, no. So it's a cultural issue in with the Mormon church, just like it is the Catholic Church. The cultural issue is if you're there in Salt Lake City and you're hearing about a problem like this, you know that on the police force, there are a lot of Mormons working on the police force. Correct. In politics, there are a lot of politicians that can bring to bear whatever they want to do or in politics. Or friends within the church themselves who are being asked to police these very acute people that are being accused of molesting children. In some cases, you had members of the Mormon church leaders themselves who were molesting their own children in some of these yeah. lawsuits. And these children were being told, oh, this is being handled. You don't have to worry about it. So they it never occurred to them to go to the police. And there are people within the Mormon church who are working to get those policies changed so that there's mandatory reporting. Well, what they do, one, one thing that they do is they have a committee. Every Everything in the Mormon church is committee. Okay, so your child is molested. We got to go to the committee. We have to report to the committee. The first thing the committee does is have you sign a non-disclosure uh, arrangement. The same, same thing USC did, for example, when we caught, you know, the, the gynecologist that was abusing so many people. Uh, the, the people, the, the students would go to the college and they would say, we have this problem. And they say, well, we're glad you came here. We got to send you now to the committee. You're going to sign a document. It's all going to be it's all going to be disappeared. And that's the same thing that happens here 
in a very well-organized kind of way with the Mormon church. Absolutely, and the victim is left basically with no support, especially if members of their family or their friends are all attached to the church as well. They've been set up to be, to not be believed for one, or if they are believed, oh, well, the problem's going to get taken care of, so you're not given any kind of support to go outside of the church to get your this crime, in many cases, addressed. It's yeah, you, more you, than a problem, it's a crime. Yeah, you really want to freak out about some issues of the Mormon church, go read Under the Banner of Heaven. It is terrifying. I will check it that, out. People that, need to know. Yeah, well, that, this is this this book tells it. Thank, thank you, Pat. Yeah, thank you for joining me, Molly. I appreciate it. This is a story that I'm, I'm sure you're going to continue building.